There were two vices, much blacker and more serious than the rest. Lack of persistence and lack of self-control. Persist and resist. A man venerated for his benevolence, discipline, and self-control. Throughout his meditations, he constantly warned himself as to what would happen if he gave in to superfluous desires. What is amazing is that throughout his almost 20-year tenure as Emperor of Rome, with unimaginable temptations always surrounding him, he consistently demonstrated kindness, fairness, and magnanimity. Never once is it reported that he displayed any arrogance or sign of megalomania. But how did he do it? How did Marcus Aurelius maintain control in possibly the most toxic environment filled with betrayal and hardships? Before we get into what Marcus believed about the human condition, let's take a look at some of the things that he had to endure all while heading a massive empire and fighting multiple wars. This should give you an idea of the strength of this man's constitution. Ascending to the throne on March 8, 161 CE, he ruled together with his adopted brother, Lucius Verus. During his reign, Marcus and his wife Faustina the Younger had 13 children, of which seven passed before him. I can't imagine what toll that alone took on him. On top of this, he also lost Lucius Verus in 169 and his wife Faustina in the winter of 75. He also lost one third of the population he was tasked with protecting to a pestilence later named the Antonine Plague. This made the fighting of the Marcomannic War against the Germanic barbarians increasingly difficult. Lastly, the Tiber River flooded in the spring of 162 CE, killing a significant portion of the wildlife, ruining grain stores, and subsequently causing widespread famine. Now ask yourself, under those circumstances, could you maintain your composure, run an empire, all while still placing the needs of others above your own? Honestly, I don't think I could hold a candle to him. He had unbelievable mental fortitude and strength, as well as self-discipline. There's no question that his fundamental belief in Stoicism helped him press on regardless of the circumstances or the happenings in his life. Marcus Aurelius believed that our very lives are ephemeral and that focusing on something that's outside of your control is irrational. This doesn't mean that he didn't grieve for the loss of his countrymen and his loved ones alike. This quote by Epictetus, someone who Marcus Aurelius respected for his works on the Stoic doctrine, pretty well sums up Marcus's view on death. He said, life is something like going on an ocean voyage. What can I do? Pick the captain, pick the boat, the date, the best time to sail, but then a storm hits. What are my options? I do the only thing I'm in position to do. Drown, but fearlessly, without bawling or crying out to God, because I know that what is born must also die. Because he was always following the Logos and striving to be the best human being that he could be, he had a strong understanding of his purpose and place in nature. To him, whatever the circumstances in his life were too chaotic, he always had a place to go. This place was his mind. He said it is in your power, whenever you choose, to retire into yourself. For there is no retreat that is quicker or freer from trouble than a man's own soul especially when he has within him such thoughts that by looking into them, he is immediately in perfect tranquility. And tranquility is nothing else than the good ordering of the mind. Not only did Marcus Aurelius have to stay on guard through tremendous tragedy, he also had to refrain from self-indulgence. When you're the ruler of the entire known world, there's not much that you can't have. With this immense temptation, one can only imagine the extraordinary self-control and virtue that he would have to have in order not to disgrace himself. You can see this with tons of the emperors before and after him. Marcus Aurelius is a master of discipline and a truly virtuous person. Now why does this matter? Because it's an example. He is a precedent of what human beings are capable of. If he can press on through such extreme circumstances, then there's nothing that can break you and there's nothing that can stop you from doing what you ought to do. If you think that you're going to do something against what you know is right, or you're gonna stop from doing something before you even finish it, then remember Marcus Aurelius. Because any behavior that is available to one person 
is available to all people. If he did it, then you can also do it. If you want to look into the mind of this exceptional human being, pick up a copy of his self-reflections called The Meditations. This is what the book cover looks like if you get the Dover Thrift Edition. Uh, you can get it on Amazon for about $4. The link is in the description below. Now I'm going to leave you with this quote from Marcus Aurelius. I am rising to the work of a human being. Why then am I dissatisfied if I am going to do the things for which I exist, and for which I was brought into this world? Or have I been made for this, to lie under the blankets and keep myself warm? Do you exist then to take your pleasure, and not at all for action or exertion? Make sure you subscribe if you enjoy the content and want to learn more about Stoicism and the notable figures who practiced it. Stay stoic and stay satisfied. I hope to see you in the next video.